Hey gang, it's John from Bill and Paul's, and uh, today we're joined by Ryan Dean, our store manager, and the guy that buys all of our Alpine ski equipment. It's gonna be kind of a fun job. It is a fun job. I actually get to hop on a plane tomorrow uh, with you, and we'll head out west yeah. to Salt Lake City, and we get to see all what's coming out down the pipeline for next year, and it gets us all geeked and psyched to ready for another year, which is really cool. But for this year, we still have lots of inventory, and uh, today we're going to talk about Alpine Ski Bindings for our What's Going On in Alpine Ski Binding Wednesday. So, uh, in front of us, we've got a bunch of new bindings, and when we sell a new package, the binding is almost like an afterthought, isn't it? Right. It tends to be that way. People took a ski out, and we tend to categorize skis into two categories. We've got that first style, how'd you call that? Or so this is our integrated, you know, all mountain intermediate ski where it's got an integrated binding system. The bindings are, they slide right on a rail system. It makes it really easy for that novice ski buyer to not have the decision of, boy, we just talked for a half hour about skis, a half hour about boots, and now we gotta go look at a big binding wall and figure out a binding. In this case, Head and Taroli have already taken that decision out of the game makes it really easy for the end consumer to know that they're gonna get a good binding made it up with that ski and it just makes that sale process a lot easier, so. And the performance of the binding will match the performance yep. of the skis. Works really well, growing teenagers or something too, they can quickly and easily come back in and have the bindings adjusted for a, a boot change or a boot size change. Perfect. And then we are selling a lot of these free ride skis and also the twin tip category where there is no binding on there. So yep. then there is a little bit of a decision. Yeah, so we call these flat skis or flat bound skis where we're going to actually drill the binding just like we did 25 years ago, right into the core of the skis. So that's what we have in front of us here. We're actually drilling the toe piece, drilling the heel piece in. Works really well for the wider skis because it eliminates a piece of plastic and a piece of metal in there. It'll keep it light as well as like John mentioned with the kids in the park and the twin tips, they like to have their boot as close to the as close to the ski and as close to the snow or whatever feature they're sliding on. So they'll, they'll tend to go with the flat mount. So when I pick that ski out and then we get to the decision making process, what are a few of the um, elements of, that go into where I'm gonna, what do I buy? Yeah, so well right now the big thing and the word on the sales floor is sole compatibility and that's not a, the latest dating game in the evening. It's, Are you talking about soul like I've got soul? <laughs> or? Not, not anybody has your soul. So. Yeah. <laughs> so in this case, it's the bottom of the ski boot. Uh, and this sole right here, hopefully it shows up good on camera, is what's called grip lock sole. So it looks much more like a hiking boot. It's rubberized, so really, really good grip on tile floors in the lodges, parking lots. Um, and then if you're walking off trail or you want to hike to the chairlift or away from the chairlift to get to better terrain as well. And the rocker um, a little bit yeah. too, so they actually... So it's, it has a little bit of rocker so that the boot can actually tip and walk much more like a, a shoe. Versus our traditional DIN soles, which are hard plastic and very flat. So they made a good mating surface with the bindings. They weren't so great to walk in, especially for beginners around lodges, up steps. Um, I've got a pair of grip walk boots this year and it's pretty cool how easy it makes walking through the lodge. So the beginning part is we need to figure out what boot they're in. If we've sold them or sold you guys your boots, we will know whether you are on a grip locker or right. a sole. But you're going to come in with your boots that you've loved for the last five or six years. And if we have to help you with that binding decision, that will take care of some of that. Yep. So that's first. What else do I want to think about when I'm picking out a binding? Uh, well, the DIN level itself, so we're looking, we're assessing how heavy the skier is, what category the skier is, if they're a beginner, an intermediate, or advanced, and all bindings will have a spring level uh, in the DIN that tells you how stiff that binding is or that spring is set for releasing properly. Lighter weight skiers, more novice skiers can get away with a lighter DIN. The more aggressive skiers like John, they got to have a higher DIN setting, so they're going to want a bigger DIN. Big strong legs. Yep. Yeah. So uh, a less expensive lower DIN binding, is that less safe than a? Nope, so the beauty with bindings is they all have to pass the same safety standards. So you do not have to be cautious or worried about, boy, I bought a $149 binding and I'm gonna go out skiing for the first time versus Mo who bought the $349 binding. You're both gonna be safe and you're gonna both be in an appropriate binding. And when you have us install your bindings or bring them in for uh, Finding adjustments or tests, we actually run that through a machine. You know, we guys will see some video of that, I believe, in this uh, segment. And um, so it's not just somebody wrenching on a piece of pipe, it's a very cal calibrated machine right. for your yep. exact pressure. So, um, 
What's new? Is there anything cool and new out there? There's some pretty cool new stuff in there. So for the last few years, everything's been going to wide ride where our AFD is much wider under the boot to transfer energy to the edges. The wings are wider. The stride binding from Solomon is brand new this year. And as you notice, they took the DIN spring and turned it back longitudinally. And they went back to kind of the, the typical Solomon oversized wings, which help hold the boot in. But by doing the screw back vertically, it allows them to have a lot more elastic travel because they're not restricted to the, the spring distance itself. So that's a cool new binding. It works with all the all the uh, boots and all these new grip walk bindings, which cool is they're backwards compatible with the old insoles. So the, the old boots will work in here. The other cool new thing is uh, the protector binding from head, which is done a lot on the heel back here. So it looks like a traditional binding back here. It's gonna release and pop out just like any other binding, but they've added elastic travel or horizontal movement to the heel piece. So I get seven millimeters of travel to the heel before it pops out. So um, hopefully the thought behind this binding is that they can continue to make skiing better on the knees, right? So now I have full heel release side to side and then also for the aggressive skier, I actually can get increased elastic travel if they're really, really carving hard and they might not want to pre-release, they'll get a little bit more travel that way side to side. So really cool technology. All signs point to this, at least with Tirolia, that this is kind of the road that they're going. Start yep. <coughs> trickling that into yep. their full line of bindings. So you uh, decided you were gonna buy one of these flat bindings and uh, you have a pair of skis that has a binding on it. Uh, transferable, can we just do that still? For the most part, yep. It's it's pretty easy on, on a lot of skis to be able to put a new binding on an old ski. But there are issues with yeah. some of the bindings now that are right. maybe not even five, six years old, right? What are we running into? So some of the people, a couple things, when they come in with old equipment, the first thing we're going to check in the shop is make sure we can still work on the binding that they are coming in with. So there's an indemnified binding list. If it's not on the list, we're not going to be able to work on it. And then in this case, say it was a binding we could work on and they're buying new boots that have grip lock soles. These bindings, a lot of these older bindings aren't compatible with the grip lock soles. So not the end of the world. Most of the boots, we're gonna have the soles in the back to convert those boots back over to a, a DIN sole. Uh, and then you'd have the grip walk soles with you for home if you upgrade later on down the road. So compatibility has been somewhat of a challenge. And then I think the other piece that we run into is brake width. So on an older ski yeah. that was narrower, now these wider skis, are, yeah. we're running into issues there and brakes aren't really available for holding binding. So right. if you have questions on what's going on, if you get new boots or you're buying new skis and you've got uh, decent bindings from older skis, not always transferable, but we certainly try to use as much of your old stuff as possible. The idea is to continue to keep this stuff in circulation and yep. let you get out the door and uh, get on a hill and have a lot of fun. So. Um, that's kind of what's going on in uh, Alpine Ski Bindings. It's not super uh, technical, it doesn't have to be. I mean, no. it can be a little bit of a swap for some people, but uh, if you're one of those people that don't uh, know exactly what you've got, come on in, see the game downstairs with questions. Mm -hmm. uh, our shop's turning work around real quick. All the new stuff's 20% off as part of our midwinter sale, and uh, we hope to see you guys soon. Once it starts snowing, it's a little gloomy behind us here Pretty today. Bad. Yeah, <laughs> so we're waiting for the what's when there's snow Wednesday to <laughs> shoot soon. So thanks for tuning in, you guys. We'll see you next week for another version of What's Blake Wednesday.